Welcome to the history of European exploration of Soames and New England. I'm Dr. David Weed, coordinator of the Soames Heritage Area Project, and I'll be your host for this presentation. The area around Warren, Rhode Island was once called Soames by the first people to occupy the area over the past 10,000 years until the arrival of the Europeans. Evidence shows that they lived very well and were described by Verrazzano in 1524 as healthier than the Europeans who visited them for trade. The Poconoka tribe there was headed by the Massasoit Osamequin. He spent most of his time in a settlement within the area where the town of Warren, Rhode Island is now, called Soames. In fact, when Osamequin died in 1661, he was buried in a grave in what is now Burrs Hill Park in Warren. The Massasoit Osamequin led over 60 tribes and sub-tribes in a region called Poconocet that extended from Narragansett Bay to Cape Cod and north to the Charles River. The settlement known as Soames included today's cities of Providence and East Providence, but also Barrington, Warren, and Bristol, Rhode Island, and Rehoboth, Seacock, and Swansea, Massachusetts. Following the King Philip War of 1675-76, his tribe began to be referred to as Wampanoag, though the Massasoit never heard that name. Over a thousand years ago, Europeans began to explore the coast of New England and nearby Canada. At least 20 different explorers recorded their travels in published literature, some returning several times. For the purpose of this presentation, the term New England has been expanded to cover the Atlantic shore from Cape Breton to the Hudson River. Thought to be the first known European to have set foot on continental North America, Leif Erikson began his visits almost 500 years before Columbus. According to the sagas of Icelanders, he established a Norse settlement at Vinland, which is usually interpreted as being coastal North America. From his descriptions, it's likely that one trip took him up the Sakonet River on the eastern side of Aquidneck Island, where he landed on the shores of Mount Hope Bay, possibly encountering the Poconoka tribe who were situated there. Archaeological evidence of a thousand-year-old Viking settlement has been found at Lasso Meadows in northern Newfoundland, though no permanent settlement survived. Situated at the tip of the Great Northern Peninsula of the island of Newfoundland, this exceptional archaeological site consists of eight timber-framed turf structures built in the same style as those found in Norse Greenland and Iceland from the same period. Artifacts found at the site show evidence of activities including iron production and woodworking, likely used for ship repair, as well as indications that those who used the camp voyaged further south. Basque is a region in the western Pyrenees that straddles the border between France and Spain. Chronicles of the period indicate that Basques first came to North America in 1517, only 17 years before French explorer Jacques Cartier. However, some historians suggest they made the journey before Christopher Columbus in 1492. By the early 1500s, it was common for English fishing ships to visit and harvest the cod from this area. Whalers would also cross the Atlantic to reach the shores of Newfoundland in the latter half of August in time to intercept the whales during their autumn migration from the Atlantic Ocean to the South Seas. Though Italian by birth, John Cabot gained a commission from King Henry VII of England to make the expedition across the North Atlantic. Historically, he has been credited with being the first European to land in North America since the Vikings. Although some historians now believe that Cabot did not actually land in North America, he did establish the British claim to the New World. Cabot and his son landed on June 24, 1497, in either Labrador, Newfoundland, or on Cape Breton Island, and claimed the land for England. From there, Cabot explored the Canadian coastline and gave names to many of the islands and capes he found. Cabot didn't find the water passage he was seeking and eventually had to return to England. 
Gaspar Cota Real left Lisbon to explore Newfoundland in 1501, but he never returned. His brother Miguel set out to search for him on May 10, 1502, and also never returned. The theory is that he became marooned on the Taunton River near Dighton Rock, where petroglyph inscriptions from 1511 were drawn by colonist Reverend John Danforth in 1680 and reported by Cotton Mather in 1690. In 1912, Edmund de la Barre wrote those markings on the Dighton Rock in Massachusetts, suggests that Miguel Corte Real had reached New England, and some speculate that he and his crew simply merged into the Poconoca tribe. Working for Francis I, uh, King of France, explorer Florentine Giovanni de Verrazzano sailed along Long Island and entered Narragansett Bay, where he received a delegation of Poconoca and Narragansett people at a harbor he called Refugio. Spending 15 days there, starting on April 22, 1524, he encountered boats full of people who came around the ship uttering various cries of wonderment. He reported, quote, among them were two kings who were as beautiful of stature and build as I can possibly describe. These people are the most beautiful and have the most civil customs that we have found on this voyage. They are very generous and give away all they have. We made great friends with them. Jacques Cartier was the first European to describe and map the Gulf of St. Lawrence and the shores of the St. Lawrence River for French King Francis. On April 20th, 1534, Cartier set sail under a commission from the king hoping to discover a western passage to the wealthy markets of Asia, which he never found. Canadian archaeologists had discovered the precise location of Cartier's lost first colony at Charlesbourg Royal. This colony was the first known European settlement in modern-day Canada since the 1000 Lance O Meadows Viking village in northern Newfoundland. Cartier was the first to document the name Canada to designate the territory on the shores of the St. Lawrence River. Marin Frobisher was an English seaman and privateer who made three voyages to the New World looking for the Northwest Passage. On Baffin Island, a group of natives captured several members of Frobisher's crew and despite several attempts to get them back, Frobisher was unable to retrieve them, so they became permanent residents. On his second voyage, Frobisher found what he thought was gold ore and carried 200 tons of it home, only to find out that it was worthless iron pyrite. When he returned to England, Frobisher brought with him three Inuit who had been forcibly taken from Baffin Island. All three died soon after their arrival in England. Sir Humphrey Gilbert became one of the leading advocates for the then mythical Northwest Passage to Cathay or China. He received a charter from Queen Elizabeth to plant a colony in North America. While his first attempt failed, he sailed again in 1583 for Newfoundland and found his colony at St. John. On the return voyage, he went down with his ship in a storm south of the Azores on September 9, 1583. Bartholomew Gosnell led the first recorded European expedition to Cape Cod in 1602. Following the coastline for several days, he discovered Martha's Vineyard, which then he explored but found seemingly uninhabited. Gosnell named it after his deceased daughter, Martha, and the wild grapes that covered much of the land. From there, they sailed about the various islands now called Elizabeth, until they came to Cuttyhunk Island. On the 20th of May, they determined to establish the proposed settlement on the western part of the island, but because of threatened Indian hostilities and fearing they had insufficient provisions to carry them through the winter, they returned to England. Martin Pring was an English explorer from Bristol, England, who in 1603, at the age of 23, was captain of an expedition to North America to assess commercial potential. In the process, he explored areas of present-day Maine, New Hampshire, and Cape Cod in Massachusetts. In 1606, Pring returned to America and mapped the Maine coast. 
He also spent two months ashore at the mouth of the Pamet River on Cape Cod in what is now Touro, Massachusetts. The explorers erected a small stockade below Corn Hill, which would be noted by the pilgrims on their subsequent journey to the New World. French noble Pierre Dugois, Sieur de Mont, established a settlement on St. Croix Island on the main coast in June 1604 under the authority of French King Henry IV, one of the first attempts by France at year-round colonizations in the territory they called L'Acadie. Cartographer Samuel de Champlain was part of the Dugas expedition. In 1613, having burned the French mission on Mount Desert Island, Samuel Argall went on to burn the old French buildings that remained on St. Croix before he moved to raid Port Royal. In 1602, Captain George Weymouth was hired to seek a Northwest Passage to India by the recently formed East India Company. He sailed from England on March 31, 1605 on the ship Archangel and landed near Monacan off the coast of Maine on May 17, 1605. He kidnapped five natives and took them to England. The idea was undoubtedly conceived by the entrepreneurs back in England as a way to become familiar with the land and inhabitants as they intended to conquer. Samuel de Champlain was a French colonist, navigator, cartographer, draftsman, soldier, explorer, geographer, ethnologist, diplomat, and chronicler. He made between 15 and 29 trips across the Atlantic Ocean and founded Quebec and New France on the 3rd of July, 1608. He entered Boston Harbor and visited Plymouth, where he made a map in 1605 and established trading companies that sent goods, primarily fur, to France and oversaw the growth of New France on the St. Lawrence River Valley until his death in 1635. Captain John Smith played an important role in the establishment of the colony at Jamestown, Virginia, the first permanent English settlement in America in the early 17th century. He, he became the first English explorer to map the Chesapeake Bay and later explored and mapped the coast of New England, though the Indian place names were replaced by the names of English cities at the request of Prince Charles. In 1614, Smith returned to America in a voyage to the coasts of Maine and Massachusetts Bay. He died in 1631 in London and was buried in 1633 in the South Isle of St. Sepulchre without Newgate Church that Roger Williams once attended. In 1607, Sir Fernando Georges, as a shareholder in the Plymouth Company, helped fund the failed Popham Colony in present-day Phillipsburg, Maine, near the mouth of the Kennebec River. Funded by the Virginia Company of London, this was the first English attempt at colonizing New England. The first ship built by the English in the New World was also completed there and was sailed back to England. The colony was abandoned in 1608 after an extremely cold winter. The exact site of the Pompon colony was lost until its rediscovery in 1994. Much of this historical location is now part of Maine's Pompom Beach State Park. In 1607 and 1608, Hudson made two attempts on behalf of English merchants to find a rumored Northwest Passage to Cathay or China via a route above the Arctic Circle. In 1609, he landed in North America on behalf of the Dutch East India Company and explored the region around the modern New York metropolitan area and as far as present-day Albany, where a trading post was established in 1614. Before leaving England, Thomas Hunt made a deal that if Squanto went on the expedition with him and his crew, Captain Hunt would take him back to where he came from. However, Captain Hunt took back his words. He did not take him back to the village. On the contrary, Squanto and 20 other Native Americans got kidnapped and were sold as slaves to Spain in 1614. Luckily, some monks in Spain helped him to get away from slavery and took care of him for three years. Squanto eventually made his way to England and returned to Patuxet with Thomas Dermer in 1619, where he remained until the pilgrims arrived the next year. 
A French fishing ship wrecked on Cape Cod, and all but three were slain by natives, and the rest were tortured. One was allowed to marry into the tribe, and the other two escaped to be later located by Dermer in 1619. According to Thomas Morton, in a short time after, the hand of God fell heavily upon the Nossets with such a mortal stroke that they died on heaps as they lay in their houses, he said, describing the first pandemic. He went on to write, along the main coast, where natives were more sustained contact with French traders, some of the earliest reports of disease outbreak were made. Over the next three years, an estimated 90% of the native people died of infectious disease. Dr. M. Richard Vines spent the winter of 1616-17 in Bitterford Pool, Maine, trading with the Pemaquad Indians and further exploring its coast. He found the local tribes were, quote, sore afflicted with the plague, for that the country was in a manner left void of inhabitants. He was not affected, but all Patuxent residents died of quick tuberculosis, and the Peacock tribe in Maine were reduced from 90 to only 5. Thomas Dermer explored the eastern coastline of America from 1614 to 1620. Dermer, working side by side with Squanto, is credited with starting to normalize the relationships between the Native Americans and Europeans. He was known to the pilgrims from copies of his letters that they had obtained. In the spring of 1620, he met with Massasoit and his brother Quadiquina, accompanied by 50 armed men. The pilgrim colony directly benefited from the diplomatic groundwork of Dermer and Squanto. He was also the first to apply the names Massachusetts and New England to these regions. Dermer was wounded by Martha's Vineyard Indians and died later of his injuries in 1620 in Virginia. Originally intending to land in Virginia, the Mayflower could not round Cape Cod and landed instead in the Poconocet village of Patuxet, known today as Plymouth. The pilgrims found a deserted village with only the bones of victims of a three-year pandemic lying above the ground as there was no one left alive to bury them. Squanto was devastated to find that everyone he knew there had perished. Over 600 years of exploring the coast of New England had brought numerous European goods to native people, but in the latter years it also brought infectious disease that continued to take their toll for hundreds of years that followed. Plymouth was the first successful permanent settlement of Europeans in New England. However, that success was due primarily to the assistance of the Poconoka tribe, headed by the Massasoit Osamequin, who provided survival skills, knowledge of the environment, and protection from other tribes over the next half century. Over the next 50 years, the English population exploded, while the Poconoka population declined due to multiple infectious disease outbreaks. By 1675, tensions led to the outbreak of the King Philip War and the near genocide of the Poconoka tribe. By the end of the 17th century, there was little doubt about Britain's success in colonizing North America, though they started much later and claimed far less territory than either Spain or France in the New World. Their settlements were far more developed and populous. But it was that success that led to the eventual devastation of Somes and the near extinction of the entire Poconocet nation, who is only slowly beginning to recover today. <laughs>